right. <laughs> Today, we are going to talk about praising God, our new series, Deeper Than Lyrics. Now, I want you to understand that I am not just talking about those who are part of the praise and worship team when we talk about deeper than lyrics. I want to talk to you this morning about worship. It is something that we are all designed to do. I'm going to show you in the word a choir made up of all of creation. God has called each and every one of us to worship him. Look at our quote of the morning. Now, somewhere around 430 B.C., Ezra begins to write. He is the scribe of the day. He's actually writing about the events that take place between 1000 B.C. and 930 B.C. Look what he says. He says, sing to him. Sing praises to him. And then he says, tell of all his wonder wonderful acts. Do you know that's what we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be praising God with our lives. We're supposed to be praising him with obedience. I want you to see your critical points this morning. The first one is this. Praise from the heavens. We're going to be talking about the heavens, the the. the purity of God, the place that we know where pure holiness dwells, praising our Lord. So none of us will have an excuse not to because he's requiring even those that are in his heavenly perimeter to praise him. Then, then I want you to see this, praise from the universe. This universal prayer, the outskirts of heavens. I want you to see this morning that every one of us, every person, place, and thing has a, has a, a requirement to praise our God. Praise from the earth. I mean, even the earth is praising our God, sitting 93 million miles away from the sun, the third planet, the closest to the sun in our universe, housing over 7 billion people is designed to praise our God. And then I want you to see this. Praise from all. I put a little note here for you just in case you didn't know what all meant. It means all together, completely, entirely, wholly, totally, everything and every part. All of us are designed to praise God. None of us have an excuse, and I want you to understand that each one of us do it in a different way. The best way to praise God is through obedience. Yes. But why not say to him, God, I love you with my life. I love you with my body. I love you with everything that, that, that's in me. Why not? Do you understand that praise is just the order of living? Well, let me, let me put it to you like this. What if I walked up to every person in here and said, you know what? I'm going to pay your mortgage for the next three months. You'd be jumping all over the place. Oh, praise the name of John Lewis. And I ain't give you nothing. And that would only be giving you money. You have to understand what, do you know we as Christians are the first one to forget what God is all about? And how powerful he is. You know, sometimes we don't have the respect for God. We start telling God what we want him to do. Uh, God, uh, God, you know I'm supposed to have that job. The God that we serve knows best for us. This is, I, I, I can tell you right now, this series, Deeper Than Lyrics, we're going to be examining praise you're going to ask yourself when you leave here, am I giving glory to God? Am I praising him? Go with me to Psalms 148. I'm going to give you a Hebrew word. Tehalah. Tehalah. This is the way to praise God as it relates to songs. Exodus 
exhortations. This is the way we give adoration to the God that we serve. T. Halar. See, what we have to do is take a step back, understand that the order of worship is designed for us. If you're reading out of your Bible, if you look at the top of the pericopes of Psalms 148, it's going to say something like the creation choir. These are all of uh, all the things, all the people, the places, any creation praising God. As I go through this chapter and read for you, you will see how every one of us has a place and we are designed to praise the Lord. Let me start here, verse one. It says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Verse two, praise him all his angels. Do you mind if I take, this is an expository teacher, do you mind if I take time and break this down? He says, Praise you, all his angels. He's talking about the angelic beings that have permission to travel between heaven and earth. They have a responsibility to praise our God. These are messengers created by God. And then he goes on. He says this, praise him all his heavenly hosts. That is the angelical army. Go with me to verse 3. He says, praise him, son. Wait a minute. The God that we serve has command over this powerful ball of fire the surface plasma is probably something like 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The God we serve has command over it. Come on, let's get excited about the fact that God cares about every one of us. He pays attention to us. And we should give him praise. And then he says, and moon sitting over 200,000 miles away from the earth is this lunar phenomenon that we cannot figure out. Orbiting our earth 27 days at a time and bringing gravity to our ocean. You can't understand it. You can't fathom. Why would he do this? How is he? How could he figure it out? He is a great God. He's far better. You know, some of, let, me, let me talk to some of you all, some of you con men. They try to trick God. They try to con him. The ones that say, well, God, if you do this, I'll do that. Don't you know he can outsmart you? The ones that say, well, I tell you what, I'm going to do this for a little while and this, that, and the other, and I'm going to try to get this from God. Don't you know he's smarter than you? This is the God that we serve. He says, praise him all. Listen, y'all read this. Praise him all you shiny stars. Do you realize there are billions and billions of stars out there in the galaxy? In fact, they say that there's a hundred billion galaxies. We don't know what God has created. Trillions and trillions of stars that praise our God. Now, why won't you? God has given us a platform to live. Why not turn your life over to him and say, I don't care what other people think. The God I serve is great. You know what? Most people got more pride in their home football team than they do God. Before they put a sticker on the back of their car that say service of Christ, which by the way is not representing the church, it's representing who you are, a servant of Christ. They're where Dallas. Now look, they quiet now. <laughs> They're where Redskins. God is real. You know, you know what's wrong? Let me tell you something. Well, let me tell you what's wrong with me. I really believe this stuff. That's what's wrong with me. 
I really believe this stuff. I command my household to live for Jesus. I, I will not have any parts of things that I know are not right. I believe this stuff. I reverence the God who can set the sun in the orbit. I, I believe that he is a great God and he will take care of me. And I don't care what people think. Go with me to verse 4. Listen to this. He says, and, and, by, and by the way, we don't know who the writer is. You know, m- m- most of the Psalms, most of the Psalms are written by David. I've told you before, Asaph has a little something to do with it. Uh, Solomon has written in Psalms. There's been all, all different types of writers. But this writer is, an- is anonymous. Look, look what he says. He says, verse 4, he says, Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the skies. Maybe he's talking about the clouds. Waters above the skies. Here's your point this morning. Praise from, from universal, from the universal. The cosmos must praise God. Go with me. Go with me. Verse 5. Listen to this. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For at this command, they were created. Now, I don't know how many of you think or believe that all of this was created by the Big Bang Theory. Okay? But here's what I would say to compliment you if you believe that all of, just, all of this just happened. Then you're more spiritual than I am. To believe that all of this could just happen. I'm told that if the sun was just 10 more miles away from the earth, we'd freeze to death. And if it was 10, more, 10 miles closer, we'd all burn up. How would, I couldn't imagine, and maybe, maybe I thought about it like this. When, when I went through this lesson, I just meditate on God. Sometimes I jot down a couple things, and then I, you know, I was like, this is one of those lessons you can preach without even looking at notes. You're looking at notes to make sure you stay on target with the time. But when I thought about it, I said to myself, I know what's wrong with me. I'm just lazy. I'd rather believe that God did it all. Because how on earth could you figure out all of these things that happen? Do you know, understand how smart man is? God has given us the ability to create, create almost anything. And so many of us think because of that, that we did it all. Well, answer me this, not here, but some, at some point, if you want to shoot me a text or something like that, um, what species of monkey evolved to be people? So I can know. Because I'll hang around the zoo for the next 25, 30 years. If I find out one, I'm going to turn into a human. (laughs) The God that we serve. Go with me to verse 6. It says, and he established them forever and ever. And he issued a decree that will never pass. I would, if you read uh, Luke uh, 19, Luke 19, nine, uh, 1940, Luke says that the rocks, the stones will cry out if we didn't praise God. The stones will have far more intelligence than we would. This is the part of living for God that it doesn't take a lot of work. It doesn't take a lot of study. It's just being grateful. It's just saying, God, I see. I see what you're doing. You know, if one of you all needed a liver transplant or a kidney transplant and somebody came to your, your, your rescue and they said, okay, I'm going to give you my kidney, you'll be like, What? You know, throwing parties for them and stuff, rightfully so, and, you know, trying to figure out how you can pay them and all this kind of stuff. God is real. It's not like a thing to do. It's something to live. Go with me 
Verse 7. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths. Can I, do you mind if I divide that for you? Listen here. He says, praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures. He begins to talk about the dolphins and the whales. He says, and all ocean depths. Maybe he's referring to things that we don't even understand. They, they say that there's something called a frilled shark. Very rarely seen by man. Why? Because they dwell 5,000 feet underwater. When we talk about from the ocean depths. You see, the writers of the gospel, the writers of the Bible were anointed. They were given visions. They were, they were prophesying what was to come. They were prophesying what we would learn later. He talks about the depths. Then he says, here's your point. Your point for the day, praise from the earth. Why did he use the, 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 uh, the water base to, to get his point across? 70, 71% of the earth is nothing but water. So when they, say, when they refer to the, to the earth, we're talking about the oceans, the lakes, the seas. We're talking about all of these creatures that dwell within. Now, go with me to verse 8. Lightning and hell, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. The Lord commands the atmosphere. I'm going to let you in on a secret this morning. I don't want anybody to start crying. Uh, uh, people that's ushering, get your tissue out because I'm going to hurt some feelings right now. Did you know there's no such thing as Mother Nature? Do you know these designs come from God? God controls the winds. You saw that when Jesus calmed the seas. It says lightning and hell. Snow and clouds, stormy winds. That's how great our God is. Go with me, go with me. Verse 9, listen to this. You mountains, and we're talking about praises, right? Okay, so all of these, all of, all of these things the writer is saying should praise God. So here we go. You mountains and hills. He's talking about the topography. And he's talking about the terrain. Things that you wouldn't even think would praise God. Then he says, fruit trees. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't think about that. The produce. The food. And then he says, and all cedars. You know, I mean, we don't make a big deal about this now, but you know, back in the old days, uh, Lebanon was filled with a bunch of cedar trees. That's where everybody went to get shade. I mean, there are probably about 30 species of cedar trees, but this was something that was valued. Remember so Solomon used cedar trees in the temple. So he says, it's, it's to all of these things, praise, praise, praise. It's an order. It's an order of worship. And then he, then he goes, go, go with me to verse 10. He says, and wild animals. Oh, that is um, lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. <laughs> and, then, and then look at this. He says, and all cattle. That's anything with hoofs and horns. Then he says, small creatures. You know, the things you wouldn't even think about. A tick. A gnat, a fly. I mean, they're covering it all. And 
flying birds. Your robins, your eagles, your hawks, your owls. Everything must praise God. I mean, I, I tell you what, this is the lesson for every one of us to have. This is what I call Christianity 101. 101. You should have this lesson. Understand your place. Your place is about to praising God. Go with me to verse 11. No, now he's, now he's really going to point to some people. He says, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on the earth. He's talking about presidents, emperors. He's talking about governors. He's talking about all people in charge need to be praising God. Every one of us. Now, go with me to verse 12. He says, young men and women, they need to praise God. Now here, I disagree with how the writer wrote this. I think they meant to put mature men. But I'll read it because I don't want to change the word. It says old men. And we don't have any of those, anybody old in here. But it says old men and children. You know, you, your child is never too young to teach them how to praise God. They're never too young to understand that they should pray over their food. They're never too young to understand that they should be praying before they take a test, before they do certain things. They're never too young for this. Verse 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. We're talking about all of us praising God. If you look at your four critical points this morning, they're not hard to understand. You see yourself here somewhere. You understand that, that, that if the heavens have to pray, praise him, that we should. You understand that the entire universe is responsible for praising God. And then you see that the earth should praise God. The last thing I want you to leave with is this. Praises from all. Each one of us should take some time and figure out how we can pay tribute to the God and whom we serve. I'm going to say a prayer. I'm going to say a prayer of thanksgiving. There may be some people in here who don't know the Lord, or maybe you haven't been praising him the way that you should. Some will be just dedicating their lives to the Lord. Some will be making a commitment to God that they're going to start praising him in their own way. But nevertheless, if you repeat after me loud enough to hear your own voice, God will receive the words that you are saying from your heart. Would you repeat after me, all of us? Father, in the name of Jesus, please forgive me for my sins and my unrighteousness. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died and that he was raised for my sin. Please accept me, Lord, as I accept you. In Jesus' name. Now, God, I pray right now for the people in this room, Father, who have not been giving you praise and honor. God, I pray that each person will go home and reread Psalm 148 and understand, God, how great you are. And that they will make a commitment to serve. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.